and authority. So let's examine good and evil. If God created everything and saw everything that was going to happen and hit that first domino and said, let it all rip, let it all go, then he's the creator of good and evil. He's the father of evil. Some people may say, no, 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 God is not the father of evil. He's only the father of good. But evil is a perversion of good. But remember, if God saw that evil was going to come to pass, he saw that it was going to be present, he let it all happen, what does that mean? That means he's still the creator of evil, because he's the creator of all. Evil is a part of all things. Now, this section I wanted to get to, because mm -hmm. this actually allows us to touch briefly upon theodicy. And but we'll just do this section, and then we'll we'll call it good. We've been going for ninety minutes. I've still got some other stuff that I'll get to. Would you trust me to handle this stuff? You can handle it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. it okay, all right. Okay, all right. I just just wanted to make sure. You know. um, I learned everything I knew from you. So um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so so, but this is this is the theodicy um, section, and it, it the, honest with you, Jeff, it saddens me greatly. Okay. Because I don't know. Well. You know, there's been a lot of discussion for a lot of years about the suicide rates in Utah and, and things like that. Uh, I don't know if this is directly related to that, but you have here really a humanistic desire to so limit God that you think you have solved the theodicy issue when in fact you've just simply made all evil meaningless. Mm-hmm. My Arminian friends get close to doing this, not to the radical level that this does, mm -hmm. but this is a desire on the part of mankind that we need to fight. And so his argument here, I think we need to hear it. Let, let me, let me, with that in mind, listen, listen to this again. So let's examine good and evil. If God created everything and saw everything that was going to happen and hit that first domino and said, let it all rip, let it all go, then he's the creator of good and evil. So you don't even have the possibility of open theism there. Mm -hmm. I think even he recognizes, really? Serious? Open theism? Mm -hmm. He's the father of evil. Some people may say, no, 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 God is not the father of evil. He's only the father of good. But evil is a perversion of good. But remember, if God saw that evil was going to come to pass, he saw that it was going to be present, he let it all happen, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does, how does the Mormon God have knowledge of future events if he does? Is the Mormon God even sufficient as a basis for prophecy, for example? Mm -hmm. How does God know future events within Mormonism? I've, I've never had anyone really be able to explain that to me. Is that just a gift given to you over time or something? I, I, I don't know. That means he's still the creator of evil, because he's the creator of all. Evil is a part of all things. So you cannot have a creator who would have a purpose in the existence of moral evil. It's just, it's just a given. You can't do it. It's the same thing in, in Islam. You cannot have a God who enters into his own creation. It's just a given. Most, almost no Muslims have ever even thought about why. As a Mormon, there can be no creator God because that would mean he has to somehow answer for the existence of evil. That's what he's saying. If God is creator of all things, he's also the creator of evil. If you're the God you're worshiping is the creator of evil, and that can't be escaped, you can try to think about it in a million ways to make God not the creator of evil, but if you're going to hold God to the Christian standard he's been held to for a long time, he is also the creator of evil. But if our God, if our Heavenly Father had a God before him and was created, guess what that means? Okay, so how does, how does he turn, the eternal law of progression allow the Mormon God to not be the creator of evil? What's it going to be? That means that there's something called eternal law. You push it off mm -hmm. to eternal law, mm -hmm. which you then cannot give any rational explanation for the origin of. That's right. And he what? hasn't thought through that. Clearly enough to even articulate what that even means and how that solves the problem. It doesn't solve the problem, right. but it makes the eternal law impersonal and hence, you can just sort of say, disconnect. Not guilty. Not guilty. Right. Not guilty. That good and evil have been around before our God existed. And Catch that, folks. I, I want you to hear this. For, for everybody, you need to understand the Mormon God here. Listen. That good and evil have been around before our God existed. So he can't be accountable for it because, hey, it's a problem. He, he, you know, it's sort of like how every president blames the last president for the economy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's so right. Whatever God, whatever yes. God stage you're at, same thing. Uh, right. It's it, 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 that's it, we've always been dealing with this issue. It's it's a tough one. And yeah. when he was exalted into godhood, and when he became a creator, that means he only organized good for the benefit of all of us. When he became a creator, mm -hmm. now you've got multiple creators, mm -hmm. and and 
we're watching Mormonism collapsing on homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have no ground for a meaningful definition of creator and the Imago Dei. Mm -hmm. Because we're image of God. What's that supposed to mean? Mm -hmm. Even God's in the image of God. In, mm -hmm. in the image of God. It's, it's in the image of God. In the image of God. In the image of God. Where's it stop? I don't there's, know. There's no Infinite origin regression. for it. regression. No origin for yeah. it. No meaning to it. Exactly. Yeah. And it, and and that that really important thing there is that the difference between Kwaku's theology and his God versus the biblical theology, the biblical God, is that Kwaku has a law, a standard operating above or outside of his God that his God must bend to, be shaped by, had to learn to obey. Mm -hmm. Can you just consider that? Kwaku worships a man who had to learn to obey a law that is higher than himself, that has existed outside of himself. And when he sets things in motion, all he does is, Kwaku says, he shapes good. Well, is good a substance? Yeah. Is, is it a sub? What do you mean he shapes good? I like to ask, maybe he can articulate what he means by that. But what do you mean he shapes good? Because you just said that it exists outside of God. It's a, good and evil are standards that have existed and preceded God, our man God that we worship, and then his God and his God and his God, and then all the other mother gods that have existed. And so what do you mean by shape? Is good material? Is good made of matter? Exactly. Or is it just an idea and therefore not real in the first place? Right. That's what that's what Rich was going to say. Is that what yeah. you're going to say? So, so yeah. I, I, uh, 10 seconds here and then... then yeah. To fight against evil. He didn't create evil. Evil was already there. Good was already there. Good and evil are labels of actions. They're abstractions. They're not actual tangible things. He organizes good to fight against evil. He isn't the creator of evil. There's somewhat of an answer that doesn't seem coherent. No. No, it's a, it, 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 there's there's no meaningful discussion happening here, and it, it shaping good even though good isn't material and it's just right. an abstraction and, and 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 it's but it's always existed and so it, you can't come up with an idea as to why it was made or who made it or what the ground of its existence is. I mean, I mean, this is a there's a reason why Mormonism has never produced a a coherent worldview, and mm -hmm. that's why it cannot even begin to engage with the modern culture and what's going on right now. That's why what we're seeing in Utah, we are seeing this incredible collapse. I mean, 